Hey everybody, it's Alabama Boss with another episode of Uncurrent Events. Okay, this one takes us to Tarpon Springs, Florida, where a woman is wanting her fiance to crack her back. Her back's bothering her and she's asking him, hey, can you come here and crack my back for me? And he's like, no, I'm playing a video game, leave me alone. She gets upset and she goes ape crazy and decides to go to the garage and get a gun. Not only did she go out to the garage and get a gun, but she could have brought in empty and just waved it around. No, she loaded this damn thing and she doesn't get the response she wants. She's got a handgun pointing it at him and he's not budging but she does something that she should not have done. She killed the dog because this man would not crack her back. And it's sad, yes, the dog had to die for him to realize that he was dating a crazy bitch. But since this is Florida, all she's being charged with is animal cruelty. I don't know why she can't get it like attempted murder, brandishing a weapon, firing a firearm in a residence, something. Look, I don't know if you follow on current events very much, but like, 75% of our stories come out of Florida. I mean, what the hell is going on in Florida? Look, as much as I want to put all of the blame on this woman, I'm putting some of the blame on Florida because y'all got a lot of crazies running around. Okay, this next one takes us to China. And a lot of y'all have probably saw this video. If you hadn't, go look it up because it's pretty funny. There's this little Chinese boy. He gets on an elevator and you can tell he's a little mischievous son of a bitch. He backs up in the corner, takes a look around, pulls out his wang, and he takes a leak all over the control panel of the damn elevator. The lights start flashing and kind of zapping out, and the elevator shuts down. He's trapped. He had to be rescued. I mean, it wasn't like he was in a nice lit place. This was a young boy, so he was terrified. The elevator locked down, lights flashed. It looked like one of those damn pranks where a ghost comes busting out of the wall, scares the hell out of you. The Ministry of Public Security released this video in an effort to help educate parents on how to raise their heathen kids. Like, look, this is what happens when you raise a little heathen. He gets on the elevator, pisses on the buttons, and he gets trapped, and we have to deal with it. Could you please take care of your kids? Which I honestly thought that they still cane people in China, and he may have got caned, I don't know. Hopefully his parents caned his ass when they got him out of the elevator. Look, that's probably his main problem. He's like a serial pisser, but he finally met his match with this elevator and he paid the price. Okay, this next one takes us to England. There's a school over there that has now banned a haircut called the Meet Me at McDonald's haircut. Now, I really dug deep on this, trying to find out where the hell they come up with that name, Meet Me at McDonald's haircut. Nobody knows where this came from, but the haircut is pretty much short on the sides, all the way around, with a lot on top. Kind of like a perm. Some of them do have a perm. And once you get all of this hair permed up on top that's front and floppy, you kind of shift it to the front. The guy at this school says no more. We will not have this distraction in our school system. I think distraction in the school system will prepare you better for the real world. What are you gonna do if the teacher pulls a damn wild cat out of his bag, turns it loose, or a chicken, throws it in there, and everybody's looking at it and he goes, no, the goal here is to finish your test, don't worry what the chicken does, don't worry about the cat, do your job. No, we're focused on a haircut. Let's give them more distractions. Let's make school difficult. Look, if you can't go to school and do your job because the kid besides you has the meet me at McDonald's haircut, you're gonna fail when it comes to the real world. You're in for a rude awakening. All right, this one right here takes us back to China. So the Ministry of Culture has decided to crack down on strippers at funerals. Yeah, you heard me right, strippers at funerals. Apparently this is a traditional thing Families will bring strippers to the funeral to encourage others to show up, to basically get a large gathering at the funeral. And some experts claim that stripper performances at funerals encourage higher reproduction rates. So the bottom line is they're expecting couples to go home and f like rabbits after going to the funeral. There ain't nothing like a good f after a funeral. Now China says no more, it's getting out of hand, it's too trashy. China's Ministry of Culture has went as far as offering a cash reward for any information leading to tips about funerals that's gonna have strippers there. They've even created a stripper tip hotline. 
The way I'm reading this story, funerals are basically a big ass party. I mean, I kind of envision like a stripper pole up beside the casket. You got to walk by a stripper swinging around, looking down in the casket at long lost grandpa, who's still got a semi grin on his face because you know that that's what he wanted. There's probably some old Chinese bar band over to the side playing pour some sugar on me as everybody goes by the strippers. It's a great, great time. Look, maybe we can learn a little something from this. Nobody likes going to a funeral. I would go to a lot more funerals if there were strippers there. And I don't mean to say that as any disrespect, I just think I would do it. You know, stop by the store, pick up a few singles, and go down to the funeral parlor. Stand in line, sign my name, come through. Appreciate it, buddy. Okay, this story takes us to British Columbia where a pig named Molly was rescued in a hoarding situation. So there was 57 potbelly pigs living in a house. The SPCA went in, rescued all the pigs, they nursed Molly back to health, and in January, this nice loving couple came in and adopted Molly, the potbelly pig. So the new owners take this potbelly pig home and they start having some issues with the pig. It's not getting along very well with the dog. It's messing with the doors a lot. So these new owners decided, look, this pig is stupid. It's giving us one hell of a time trying to train it. It won't do anything we say. I believe the best option now is to kill the pig. And you know, they probably discussed it. They're like, well, should we just shoot it and throw it in a ditch? He's like, no, it's a pig. Let's shoot it, skin it, and eat it. And I know there's some people out there that's like, oh my God. They took this rescue animal and ate it. No way. This is a pig. And yeah, it's a potbelly pig, but it's still a pig. I'm not sure what potbelly pig bacon tastes like, but it's probably not far off from regular old bacon. I know it's gotta be better than turkey bacon because that shit sucks. There's a ton of backlash now, which leads me to question, how the hell did anybody find out that they killed and ate this pig? Did they kill this pig and get on the internet and be like, look, we killed our pot belly and it made some damn good sausage. I mean, what happened? How did the story get out? But that doesn't matter now because the story is out and people are pissed. I'm gonna read you this quote. To hear that somebody did this to an animal that we worked so hard to make sure was healthy and tried to get into a good home is absolutely heartbreaking. Well, honestly, I'm sure the new owners thank you very much for getting the pig nice, fat, and healthy because that made dinner much better. This would have been a totally different story if it had been something like a nice little poodle and they ate it, but this is a pig, let's be honest. It didn't stop being delicious when they named it. Speaking of exotic pets, this one takes us to Michigan, where a man is in desperate need for a monkey. That's his words. He said, I need a monkey. I want to be different. So the guy finds someone in Hawaii who has the monkey that he needs. And this starts a process. He has to send an initial amount of $400 to this person in Hawaii. Well, after that, the man sends a request for more money. He doesn't ask for payment through like a secure payment process, like a credit card. He has to send the guy Amazon gift cards. What's funny about this story is this man went and bought so many gift cards at CVS and Walgreens that the store attendants there told him, hey man, you're being scammed. You should stop doing this. But he didn't. He actually went to the extreme of texting all of his credit card information to this person that had his monkey over the phone. He finally realized that he's not gonna get the monkey he needs to be different. And look, if you're watching fella, you're different, a special kind of different. But he's now using his experience of getting scammed by the monkey salesman in Hawaii to warn others. But guess what, guy? Most of us have a little common sense, and we're not gonna go sending Amazon gift cards all over the country, and we're not gonna buy a damn monkey. So if we learned anything from this, there's a dumbass in Michigan. Well, that's all I got this week. If we've learned anything, if you're gonna go pissing on stuff, don't piss on elevator buttons. If you're gonna eat a pet pig, don't go post it on Facebook. And if you wanna go to the best funerals, they're still in China. I'm Alabama Boss of Rated Red. Y'all have a good one.